Hey guys, it's Phoebe here with Space City Soaps. So here is my setup for the Wild Rose um, cold process soap. So I'm going to take you over and show you what I have laid out. Um, one of the main reasons why I'm showing you guys this is because I really wish that somebody had showed me their setup because I, I don't know, I think it's really interesting. Um, we all know that one of the best practices is to have it all set up before you begin. And I don't know, I think it would be really interesting to see how other people set up their table with all their additives and their micas and everything. And um, just see how they have it set up. I just think it's interesting, you know, sort of efficiency and, you know, there's like tricks and different ideas on what to do. I don't know. It just seems like a really cool idea. So I wanted to start it off. And I hope, you know, like this kind of video catches on because I think it would be really neat to see other soapers, I guess, tablescape. What are we going to call this? We're going to call this a workstation, work soap setup, I guess. Yeah, soap setup. So this is the Wild Rose soap setup. Yeah, okay, so let's start from the left and go to the right. So I have my scale here. I always have it right here. Um, obviously stick, blender, um, this is the, uh, digital thermometer. Yeah, infrared thermometer. These things are amazing. Um, mine's a little dirty, but like, these things are fantastic for making soap, for, you know, making candles. These things are wonderful. I have one of the other types with the stick, you know, just a regular manual thermometer. Um, which I like them too, but these are just so, so fast and they have, um, it's very easy to read and everything. Gloves, obviously can't soap without gloves. Um, I just put like a whole bunch of different measuring spoons and different spoons. Just if I need them, I can grab them. A little utility knife, paring knife is a bottle of rubbing alcohol. I need to get more paper towels. Here's the second part of the stick blender goggles, of course. Um, here is my cup of spatulas and spoons, and I have some scissors. This is the uh, fragrance oil that I will be putting in the Wild Rose Soap. Um, I really, now this is just sort of my own weird little habit that I have created. I don't know, I doubt that it has any sort of scientific grounding. It's just, it's something that I do that I like to do, and... I honestly don't remember how I came up with this concept, but I've stuck to it ever since. And that is, is that I add my kaolin clay to my fragrance oil and I stir for two minutes and I let the fragrance oil bloom in the kaolin clay. And it, it looks not that appealing, but I mean, once you put it in the soap, you can't see the fragrance. It does not discolor. It's just like if you put the two, um, if you put kale and clay and, and your fragrance oil separately. So yeah, so that's what I do. That's a little quirk of mine. Um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to swirl this soap. So I have my, um, gear tie ready and I use this to do butterfly swirls. I have a whole bunch of these spatulas. As you can see, these suckers are amazing. I got them at Sam's Club. They are not cheap. They are, you know, a good amount. They are, I think, $8, seven, seven something or other. Um, but you get two and you will not regret it. These are professional grade. I mean, they are sturdy. They scrape really good. They scrape the bucket amazingly. So now we're over here and this is sort of my colorant section for the soap. Again, I'm not perfectly sure what I'm going to be doing, but as we get over there, you'll see I have a lot of embeds to go up on the soap and I have notes on the colors that I used for these embeds. I'll just show you them right now. So I will probably match up the colors to the embeds, the Milton Port Embed roses. Um, so I have those notes on the curing card um, and I always keep this handy and I always make changes, make notes, scratch things out. These things get really 
messy, but I always keep this close by. So here are all my colorants. Like I said, I haven't mixed them yet, but here is one of my additives. So this is equal parts coconut milk and goat's milk. And look how rich that is. That is like a lotion. Oh, it just looks so good. And all of this is gonna be added to the soap. And it even smells good in a creamy kind of way. It smells really nice. So that's going to be added. And of course I have my titanium dioxide already diluted. Here is my lye water solution. Um, I always like to have, I know these are pretty sturdy plastic. I really, really wish that I could um, buy, you know, like a whole bunch of the stainless steel pourers, but I can't seem to find any at a reasonable price. So if anybody has any ideas or any, you know, I used to use glass, but I don't know. I need bigger. <laughs> So yeah, so in the lye water I have on the label that um, in this container, there, it contains lye water and silk. And I really, really love adding silk to my soaps. Um, I have just recently started, I have a couple of batches with the silk and I really, really love it. Um, I make sure to use uh, cruelty-free silk. Uh, and it's really cool because the um, company I buy it from, they make sure that the the caterpillars have left the cocoons before the silk is harvested. So definitely cruelty free. And then here are the oils. And the reason why I have them labeled and covered like this, you know, this has a top, this is covered, is because I portion off my soap beforehand. See, here's another one, one that we have portioned off. So this one is going to be a um it's going to be the same soap as the monarch butterfly soap but my brother just loved the fragrance of the monarch butterfly soap and he asked if i could make the exact same soap only you know in regular you know just a regular bar of soap not a cupcake soap and so i'm going to do it in the slab mold i have the oils i have the lye ready all of the stuff everything's ready to go i even have some an extra pair of goggles um, so yeah, so that's why I have them labeled. And of course I have the mold for the wild rose soap. I have all different little containers in case I need them. Again, here is, here are the melt and pour soap roses that are going to cover the top of the soap. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And then in the corner I have my San Pellegrino. I always have to be drinking something while I soap, but I love this. I love this um, blood orange San Pellegrino. This stuff is amazing. If you haven't tried it, it's delicious. I love it. Okay, and so that is my soap setup right there. My soap table, my soaping setup. Um, yeah, so if you're a soaper, totally share what your workspace looks like right before you start soaping. How do you have it all laid out? Hashtag it soaping setup challenge. I think I'm gonna make this a challenge, you guys. Why not? So this is gonna be the soaping, hashtag soaping setup challenge. And yeah, make your own. It's fun. It's fun to share. All right, and Happy New Year, everybody. And I'm, I am going to make the Wild Rose Soap, and I will see you later. Bye.